I'm Al Phil Reese. I'm Anna Safford. And this is Mod Po Minute, actually five minutes. We're hoping to scratch the surface of a short poem that we like. So let's get started. Well, I'm here in the Writer's House Kitchen, which is one of our favorite places, with Gabriel <laughs> Ojeda Segay. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Al. How are you? We're going to be talking about a poem by Wallace Stevens called Disillusionment of Ten O'Clock. I'll read it and we'll talk about it. Disillusionment of Ten O'Clock. The houses are haunted by white nightgowns. None are green or purple with green rings or green with yellow rings or yellow with blue rings. None of them are strange with socks of lace and beaded censures. People are not going to dream of baboons and periwinkles. Only here and there, an old sailor, drunk and asleep in his boots, catches tigers in red weather. That was good. <laughs> yeah, I love this poem. Okay, so what does disillusionment mean? Sounds like his own disillusionment with Oh, in the sense happening. of like feeling sad. Yeah, or feeling like, oh, it's not as special as maybe you thought it was. Okay, good. It's 10 o'clock in this neighborhood. The houses are haunted by white night ends. It seems like people are going to bed early. It's boring. Yeah. It's a suburb. <laughs> yeah. It's a suburb. It's 10 o'clock bedtime. 10 o'clock. So he's disillusioned by life. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what else is disillusionment? Well, the idea that there's not a kind of like creativity or a challengingness to that nighttime like it maybe feels like something that could have a lot of possibility to it it's about to enter a dream space but he's imagining that in this neighborhood that's not really gonna happen so it's a kind of literal sense of disillusionment mm -hmm. there is illusionment mm -hmm. illusionment is imagination right right illusion some people think who are non-poets think illusion is um self-deception right right but he means it positively illusion is imagination the life mm -hmm. of the imagination so disillusionment is the end of the imagination. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of neighborhood is it? Seems to be suburban, um, a populace that would be able to afford a kind of like beaded white nightgown. So what color is it? It's white, and it's, it's only white. white. No, I think it's only white. I mean, yeah. I think this is West Hartford, Connecticut, and I think this is segregated. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, I mean, he does, it's not, it's hard to, it's not hard to read race in this poem, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's white because none are green or purple or yellow or mm -hmm. blue. So what is all this none, all the negativity about color? Just noting like how limited the range here is and using the nightgowns as a way to talk about a lot else saying, if even the thing they go to bed in isn't colorful or decorated or in some way special, then what happens at nighttime, the dream is certainly not going to be. Yeah. Either. Yeah. So it's a colorless place, but the poem is not colorless. How do no. we know that? Because we know all the things that the nightgowns aren't. So this is classic Stevens, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm living this, this bland white life. But I am able in my poems to escape that by putting mm -hmm. a lot of color into it. So people are not going to do this, and nobody is colorful. <laughs> colorful is the word, I think. Yeah. Nobody is yeah. colorful. Uh, vexed word, but we don't have time to, to get into <laughs> it. But except here and there, what? Here and there is an old drunk sailor. An old sailor. What's drunk he doing in the, landlocked in West Hartford? This is Seemingly so great. just kind of walking around and is going to catch tigers in red weather. Perhaps Which means what? I don't know. I mean, maybe well, it's... he's drunk on his ass, and he's probably the only <laughs> guy with any imagination in the whole right. neighborhood. Yeah, that's what at least Stevens is making him out to be. He's like the kind of dreamer figure, the more exciting figure. It's very romantic in the sense of modern life is dull. Yeah. But I, I am one of those... I think Stevens is one of those nightgowns. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Wandering out, putting the lights out, making sure there are no hobos or, or <laughs> uh, uh, drunk sailors in the neighborhood. <laughs> And yet, once in a while, the neighborhood, what happens to it? Once in a while, there's a guy doing impossible things. Yeah, here and there. There's like here a rare love that. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what does that say about, what, about the potential? Maybe it just ex puts something into the system that excites it. Like, the poem is telling us that there's not going to be any kind of dream. There's no exciting dream of baboons and periwinkles. But here and there, maybe there's this kind of version of potential, even though it's not the best one. I mean, it's a drunk old sailor kind of walking around, but... He's not in good shape. No. But one thing he does that a poem can do mm -hmm. is the impossible. Yeah. Catching tigers in Connecticut. 
on right. red weather. It's kind of like a, I don't know, a weird Matisse or a Henri Rousseau mm -hmm. or some kind of version of modernism that isn't dull. Right. Final thought, quickly. Well, I just like noticed that like rareness of the sailor. Like it doesn't feel like a very optimistic poem, but it is a poem that invests a lot in a value into that sailor figure. Like maybe there's something there that can be right. pulled out. Thanks, Gabe. This was fun. Thank you. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for Modpo, a free and open course at modpo.org.